Yeah, I think, you know, what people don't understand, that they, they have this perception that these individuals all look alike, you know, they're like the, uh, the catcher in one of the films, but they're not, they're ordinary people. In fact, they are probably the nicest people in the organisation, and that's how they infiltrate. Once they've infiltrated, that's when the damage can be caused because they're so manipulative. They're the, the friendliest people you wish to meet. There isn't a typical sort of typecast for these people. They're just, they live amongst us, they live amongst you and I. And once they've infiltrated the organisation, then the damage can be really, really serious. And at this moment, at the moment, five years, you, you, was, uh, you were quiet because uh, you, you were frightened. Very frightened. I mean, when you're a young boy, 10 years of age, and somebody threatens that they will kill your mum and dad and your, uh, your brothers, trust me, you believe them. Um, there's also, you know, whatever, whatever I say, I, I, I still can't go away from the fact that I was so desperate to be a footballer. So they played on your dreams as well. They knew that you were, were so desperate to be in my case a footballer, so they, they played on that and they were able to use that as leverage to perpetrate the abuse. Mm -hmm. And uh, after uh, how many years uh, later you started? Uh, it was 14 when it finished and then uh, how, how old uh, were you when you started? 52. I was 52 before I said anything. I'm 60 now and I didn't say a word until I was 52 in 2016, I, I came forward, but I didn't realise through my life that that was the cause of all my issues, the drugs, the drink, the problems with mental health. I, I, I didn't realise at the time that it was down to the abuse and I don't want to make the abuse an excuse for some of my actions because I do regret some things that I did, but I do know now that it was because it manifested itself from the abuse itself. So I now can deal with it that way, um, rather than always live in this black hole where you just don't understand why you don't feel the same as everybody else, where you're angry for no reason, where you struggle to communicate, where you struggle to show love, affection and emotion. I didn't understand probably until 2016 and when I first spoke about it, and then subsequently speaking about it constantly, really believe it or not, as emotional as it is, it's cathartic for me, it helps me as well to, to deal with the abuse. That, that was my next question, yeah, you came to Latvia to talk to total strangers, to, to talk about your experience and, and why it's important for you to, to continue. Yeah, and do you know what I have to say? Um, the amount, the amount of important people that were at today's session felt me full of, 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 of hope um, because it's very difficult to get so many important people in one room listening to really the devastating effects long term that abuse can have on an individual. I think sometimes we read it in books, sometimes we go on to the internet and we study it on the internet, but I think I think sometimes when somebody stands up there and talks from the heart as I do and talks about the impact from the heart, then I think that will hopefully uh, encourage the, the, the people that make the decisions within Latvia to work really hard to, to try and stop it happening here. I think that uh, maybe most of the people think that you got a like, uh, fantastic career as a football player and uh, was there like any, I don't know, healing process that you scored the goals and got some wins? Is it uh, some kind affected uh, with or, or not? No, because you see the thing, the thing that you learn to do and which I learned to do was become a very good actor. So I could play, play a role where I looked like I was having the best life, that I looked like I was enjoying everything. Then I would have them times where I'm alone where it really affected me. So what, what you do is you play and you become very good at playing this role of somebody that you know, looks like they've got everything, looks like they've got the best life, but inside you're breaking up. And often, as we know with mental health, nobody sees what's happening in some, inside someone. 
So on the outside, we can pretend that everything's okay. On the inside, you can be dying as I was for, for many years. From your point of view, can you see, I don't know, some children is affected, uh, I don't know, some, uh, some things, uh, they are like, uh, as you said, they are maybe rude or uh, how uh, the people near, uh, I don't know, family members, friends can see if it's uh, not uh, going so well. Well, I think now by, by highlighting it and by, by even this on, on Latvian TV will highlight the, 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 the problem. I think you've got to always look at a child and see if there's any change in their personality. There's also other sort of directives that you look for. And you can do that by educating yourself. But often, often, you know, when we look at a child and we, we you know, if, 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 if our gut or our stomach says something isn't quite right, genuinely, we're right. So always, always look at changes in personality you know and i always talk about if they're using language that's way above their age then there is a possibility that something's not quite right in that child's background if all of a sudden this child who doesn't have the latest designer clothing the latest iphones or ipads and starts turning up to their organization with these with these things then there's probably something not quite right in that child's background so there's many indicators that you can look for uh, in a child but often we look at the child and if we think something is wrong with that child, believe it or not, well, genuinely there is something wrong. And we need to just explore it. We need to talk about it. We need to report it to the, uh, to the right person. They can explore it. Hopefully nothing is wrong. But if we leave it too late, six weeks, seven weeks down the line, unfortunately it's far too late and that child's life is then devastated. But uh, he or she maybe is afraid to talk about how can we... Well, that's up to us to, to create an environment whereby we make it easy for the child to come and speak to us. And it's, it's simple to do. We just we sit them down, we have meetings uh, often, just talking. If anyone's got a problem, you can come and talk to me, you can come and talk to anyone. And just create that space within your organisation where a child feels comfortable that they can talk. There should be, we shouldn't ever have a situation uh, where children's activities are concerned, whereby they are not and don't feel that they can talk. We need to create that environment where they can come and talk to anyone in the organisation.